Uh, Alright, so... In this game, we're seeing nothing unusual. And after going through every last one of my lectures in order to try to get this website online, I realize how often I say that, and I need to really stop saying that. Because after about 40 or so times hearing that, I kind of wanted to shoot myself. Uh, but yes, nice, normal uh, game opening here. I've also realized that this is actually going to follow the theme that I usually go with in my lectures, which is bizarre. Because up until previously, and I might have mentioned this recently, I don't remember, but I was under the impression that I went over a lot of territorial games. I, I just had that impression. I like watching territorial games, I like watching fighting games. I had assumed that would be like most of the lectures that I bring to you, territorial fighting games. And it is not in any way, shape, or form. They're mostly influence lectures. I, I don't know how that happened. But sure enough, that I've got hard data right now uh, staring me in the face on my other screen, showing me that influence is one of the top tags that I've been using in my games. So I need to stop that. Next time, I promise we're going to go over territory game. I don't care how. I don't care who, but it's going to be territorial, and that's what we're going to do. For this for today, though, we're still going to go for some influence. Lots of influence. So much influence. We're going straight off with the large knight. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know this. I didn't know that at all, uh, Yagami. I didn't know that at all. But all right, we have large knight. Large knight enclosure off 3-4. Says we're going to be trying to play for influence. Now, usually... As you say, usually someone's trying to build it. The other person, the person who's trying to build it is usually building it in Gote or something. And then, very recently, yes, it was played recently. Uh, and yeah, the other person does get more influence, you know, through fighting and stuff. And that's kind of cool. That I do understand. I understand why I focus on that, because I like using my opponent's strategies against them, and I, fi I always find those kind of games kind of fascinating. Uh, this one's a bit more straightforward. White approaches, backs off. We don't see this anymore uh, much these days because it's way too easy to use that to our advantage. We could develop this way. We could develop this way. We could even develop this way. And that's a bit of a problem. We usually don't like seeing this from black. General rule of thumb nowadays is that this is a little bit too slow for white, which is why we've been seeing approaches onto the 4-4 on the inside pretty much every time we see the orthodox nowadays, be it low, uh, or small knight, or large knight enclosure. We usually see this for that reason. Though I don't want to say don't use the middle split in your games. It's fine. It's just that you're either going to get this variation which we all know and love. No, 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 not that one. That one sucks. There we go. You're either getting this variation. This is going to come out at some point. You're going to save yourself at some point. They're going to keep doing this. I guess they're going to probably go and get some kind of shape here. You're going to connect. And from the opening, we've pretty much taken care of half the board, right? That's one of the reasons why we don't see this very much often. Uh, nowadays. Anytime you have an opening that settles this much of the board, it's probably an opening we can do away with because that's just way too much potential gone. How to be a pro for 25 minutes. Yeah, exactly. Um, so after that, everyone began playing uh, the other variation we mentioned, where you split off this way, build up a large area, and between both of them, we're now approaching on the inside. All right, thus ends history lesson. Okay, so white tries to settle. And now here's something interesting. Black says, I'm going to build up if you let me. This is a probe. We don't know what we can do here. We don't know what we can do here. But we're going to find out with our opponent's next move. Either he's going to back off, and we can build, 
or he's going to pincer, and we're probably going to play territorially. This game, opponent backs off. So great, we can play here for influence. If not, then maybe we would have played, uh, not that. Maybe we would have played 3-3, three, three, maybe we would have uh, counter. And then maybe gone in here. No, tree's fine, tree's fine, this is normal. Tree did not die. So completely different based on one response. Here we can build, so we're going to build. White goes into the corner. We don't come out. Doesn't really make a whole lot of sense because we have no base. What if white plays p6? What is p6? That's the jump. Oh, ha <laughs> I'm already ahead of you. Since white went into corner, black's going to uh, some influence. If K just lets me play the moves, there we go. Now this is fairly normal. Now some people try to be extremely greedy and think to themselves, you know what I'm going to do? I'm not going to ladder that because that means my opponent gets a free move. So I'm going to play something else. Yeah, don't be that person. Because having Aji here is priceless. Yeah, don't be that guy. Being able to immediately get a group here that can just run and have fun, not good. I mean, right now, for example, we need uh, bases on two different parts. We need base with this, we need base with this. White only needs to make himself stronger in the middle once, and then he's fine. He's happy. Or sometimes we see this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play this way. But again, don't be this person, because now we can either reduce by extending, we can reduce by playing the attachment. We can even just screw them by uh, playing some kind of weird pincer. Way too much Aji here. There shouldn't be uh, these many free moves if you're trying to make a framework or any kind of influence that you expect to use anytime on this board. Did you used to be that poor guy? I know, we all did. We all did. It's like, okay, I know how this goes in a pro game, but I'm better than the pros, okay? They're just wasting moves. I'm not going to waste moves. I'm just going to... I'm just going to defend myself. That's what I'm going to do. No ladders for me. Yeah, doesn't work. Bad idea. Okay, so the interesting thing about this is how this game can progress. Almost all the time, we used to see Ladder Breaker, right? That used to be White's next move. Just break that ladder. It's a free move. Why wouldn't you play it? But we're actually seeing something a little bit unusual nowadays. And I'm I'm using nowadays a little bit loosely. I'm not sure if it's like an actual thing or just something people are experimenting with. But in some games on Tygem, for example, and a couple of pro games, I've been seeing uh, that not be played. I'm seeing it completely ignored, leaving it for later. No reason to get rid of the ladder. Instead, we're seeing uh, more interest being shown in the bottom, where the influence is actually trying to be built up immediately. Because black doesn't usually want that hanging around either. So your move is going to be free no matter what. In this case, black plays the uh, star point. Makes certain that ladder is not a problem. Doesn't want to get bogged down in a variation, let's say, I don't know, let's just give a variation here. Let's just give some old variation here. There we go. We got some old variation here. Let's say just like settling here. We could settle here as white. Sure, why not? Now we might want something else as black, but we still have that ladder breaker. So the question is, what would you do as black now? Would you try and develop this area? How could you develop that area when you still have this hanging around? So it doesn't really make a lot of sense trying to do that, right? Because that's just going to get, anything you try to build off right now is just going to turn around and get free move for reduction. So that, that feels a little bit strange. Uh, are we going to start a fight over here? Could, but if the fight goes in the middle, there's again going to be uh, that problem with, even if we get something as simple as like this kind of thing going, suddenly having white being able to say, wait a minute here, I have a free move in order to like try to cap you or attack you. 
still a problem. So no matter what we do here, white's gonna usually, uh, black's gonna usually ignore us because they want to get rid of that ladder. Because even if it's not a problem right now, it could be in the future. So we want to like take care of it. So we see that, which means white gets a free move. White can follow up here, uh, here, okay, JS, there we go. White can follow up here, white can extend, uh, white can take, you know, the large point. White can make enclosure. White can do a lot of different things. In this game, white decides we're going to play here anyway. Oops, <sighs> rip tree. Sorry. Okay, this is actually important. We're gonna we're gonna look at this for a minute. Why this? Why not this? And why this? What's the difference between these two moves? It's not the ladder breaker anymore. What is it? Anyone know? Five base extensions are good. Has a good follow up. Do you know what that? Ooh, both Dasan and Moboy, I think, are on top of it. Mm hmm. I like that. Yes. We're looking at follow up. Whenever, and this is a very, very important point to know. A lot of people get this kind of wrong. We essentially, have two modes of thought in Go, right? We can make an enclosure, or we can make some kind of an extension typically off a corner. Those are the two things you can do there. You can enclose it, you can extend from it. So this is not an enclosure, it's an extension. Any extension can be cut off, it can be attacked, it can be pincered, things like that. So you have to think about, if you're going to make an extension, rather than your enclosure, if it gets separated, how in trouble is it? And we see here, if there's an extension here and it gets in trouble, then we're making a small knight, and a small knight in and of itself is probably going to be a little bit in trouble, right? If we make an extension here, well, now we can play a large knight. Large knight has more space, plus anything that's trying to cut us off has less space to live in. So that makes sense. We would probably still play this if that had been a small knight. For the same reason, we can get the lar we can get uh, large knight uh, for our base. We can still attack. We're all fun. We're happy. Uh, could h3 be considered a probe? Uh, hmm. Yeah, I. Mm, I'm hesitant to call it a probe. I'm hesitant to end, to call H3 a probe. So I mean, you are wondering how white's gonna, how black's gonna respond to you pincering, right? So in that regards, I guess it is a probe. But I don't know. That feels a little strange to me for reasons I can't express. But I. I, I guess it's okay? Wow, we totally ripped that tree apart. Okay, anyway. So white has extension now. Black sees it, and he decides to be very, very respectful of what white's building. Approaches a little bit far away. Not going to get into this variation where, oops, we're completely in trouble. I mean, white already has a stone that's capping us, so we couldn't turn around and say, I'm going to attack you, because no, you're not. No, you're not. Where is it? There we go. So white gets territory. Black says that's fine. And up until this point, we don't see why I picked this game yet. I mean, I wanted to see someone it was being greedy and getting everything that they wanted. And so far, we haven't really seen that very well yet. But don't worry, that's coming up. That is coming up. So black takes extension very, very large. Uh, 
white can decide what to do. White can attack, invade. White can attack and get influence. White can go back and defend or cap or extend. There we go. Or extend. White can do a lot of things. White can kick. I think any of these are okay. Okay, with the exception of this. I don't, I'm not sure if I like this move uh, here at A. I think A is a little bit risky. Because if you give your opponent influence right now, then I would again be wondering about what's going to happen when you're cut off. I'd be a little bit worried about that. Because I mean, influence on the right, influence on the left. We're now pincered. I think A might be a bad idea. Uh, M3? Uh, M3 says, you know, I, I've had a bad day, just hurt me some more. I mean, I could be safe and take a two-space extension where you can't actually attack me and divide my stones, but you know what? I, I'm i not feeling that way today. I want you to, to separate all my stones and kill me everywhere. That'd be fine. M says, I don't respect your influence. Come and kill me. And chances are that's what your opponent would do. He'd split you, and after that, you've got multiple weak groups, and bad things are going to happen. All right, so white kick. Ooh, wait, what? You have to deal with the Moya eventually. It's so nice to have a strong group nearby. True. Um... Did Polite quote something? I'm confused. What's to Desan's question? M17 extending towards a strong stone? M17. Uh, true, but M17 is... Um, M17 is kind of defensive. Because we could play a move like M17. And we could play it because we know our opponent wants to invade us. But we're already stronger in the invasion. So if he comes in here, he's kind of falling into a trap. Where we can immediately counter because we have we already have our uh, uh, base made. This kind of thing says, my opponent is probably never taking this move. My opponent's probably going to jump up, and I'm going to get to defend that too and take territory. And if my opponent does come in, I'm already fine on both areas. So I'm going to split you, and I'm going to hurt your stones. So M17 can be OK. Though you're right, it is not urgent. Also, L7, L16 for black looks quite annoying. Uh... Oh, the probe to get more influence? Eh, I really wouldn't worry about that one so much. All right, but here we have the kick. Follow up because Pincer was ignored. Makes sense. White decide or Black decides he's going to live. And here we have a truly unusual open, uh, truly unusual uh, sequence. Right now we expect Black to run away. We expect White to settle. Maybe a little bit small. Black might get something a little bit in the middle as a result when he caps the group somehow. And then white's probably going to try to reduce the right hand side. From here, that's where I would expect the game to go. Let's see if that actually happens. Black says, I'm going to lean. Because if I lean on your group, you're making me stronger. If you're making me stronger, I'm going to crush your two stones. White says, I'm defending my corner because I realize what you're doing. If I play anywhere else, then this 3-3 three, three hurts. It hurts just by playing this. It hurts by playing this because we're completely lined up for the cut. Uh, similarly, 
many, many herdings going on. So White says, I'm going to defend the 3-3, get rid of all that Aji there, and settle myself. Black says, I can't respond to you. You get to connect, and I will as well. Why can't we respond? Because we could not do that, or you're going to resign. Because we're probably going to look at a variation like this, where white, where black has responded in Gote. White's still OK on the outside. And now we've got a problem. I mean, even something as simple as this can give us headaches, because we can't respond in a way that lets us play locally, right? We can't directly respond to the attachment. Otherwise, our stone's kind of getting surrounded. So lots and lots of problems here. Even a simple jump is annoying, because we have to go back and defend ourselves as well. So white says, forget all that. I can't respond there. Or black says, I can't respond there. And I'm just going to connect to my stones. Not at all how I thought that was going to go. White plays Hane. Black says, OK, that is a Hane, but I like Aji, so I'm going to crosscut. White's forced to kill stone. Trying to get lovely shapes. Black says no, or white says no. I'm going to actually fight this. So now we're getting really, really aggressive, because we could connect and be OK. It could connect. This doesn't really go anywhere. Ish. Maybe it does. Next, we need this and that. So, yeah. It's annoying, but it doesn't really go anywhere. It's just going to force a lot of forcing moves, a lot of captures, while well, black gets extra influence, I think. But white says no. No influence, no forcing, no captures. Get killed. So go to Ko. Yes, Ko is my favorite shape. I am awesome at Ko. I never lose one of them. No, sir. I lose all of them. There's a difference. White takes. Black says I'll kill. White says go for it. I'm done with this. Black take. White gets rid of for a very odd variation. Because it seems like he's getting the worst end of the deal now because white played to connect up, but now we're not connected up. And if white, if black's getting the influence regardless, then black's getting the influence and cutting us off. So this might be a little bit too much aggression. It's not looking like this is uh, going too well for, uh, for white. But we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Two ko in a row. My trunk. No, I'm not trolling. There is no ko here. Do not fight this ko. There's no reason to. The stone that's under Atari right now, that uh, D3, is not useful. The only useful stone here is that one. So there's no reason to fight the ko. Now, white has three stones between two black groups that needs to live. As you can see, this is turning into a very interesting influential game. Because white built, or black built a lot of influence in the very beginning of the game that he wants to use to attack something with. That's generally what we want to use uh, influence for. White looked like he was doing well in sidestepping black's attempt to use that by connecting up underneath originally and saving h3, but then he got greedy and now it's in trouble again. So once again, black get what is getting what he wants. White comes out. Black says, you are not connecting. You are prey. Prey does not get to connect. Going to create a cut point. Maybe. There we go. KJS, why you lag? 
No, not a cohere either. Instead, we'd have a group that we're attacking. Now, it does bear mentioning that black is not entirely alive on the bottom just yet. Why is my voice high pitched? Am I, is my voice high pitched? It shouldn't be. If it was, it's not anymore. I did not drop frames on OBS, so I think it might be you. Oh, you noticed that too? Okay. Okay, it might have been me or it might have been KGS, I don't know. It was one of us. Alright, so White says, I'm gonna kill. I'm surrounding you. You're gonna die. That's gonna be game over. Now, the question here is what are your predictions? Is black going to live? Can black escape? Is this going to co? Black will live, pros don't die, they trade. Okay. Well, okay, you contradict yourself. If someone if you're trading, then something has died. You just got something for it. <laughs> but I, I like your suggestion, oh boy. Black is going to trade. And you're right. Black takes. White says, I kill. Black says, I honey. White says, okay, but then I kill. Black says, that's fine. White connects. And black connects. Uh, these little things are always fascinating. These little sequences are always so fascinating. Because these are the kind of things that we might see during our own games. And most of us won't play them. Because we're kind of afraid to. It's like, no, I am not giving away that many stones for influence that might not even be useful. Now, on the bright side, white owes a move here. In order to actually take everything that he wants, he needs, he needs more moves. Unfortunately, he's being a little bit greedy. He says, I'm going to extend out. Black says, oh, then we're going back to Ko. I mean, he could have played something else. He could have gone back to Ko immediately. Might have even been able to connect. Yeah, could have even connected. Well, the connection actually doesn't work, does it? All right, the connection actually gets a little bit weird. Because then we have this, don't we? And then what do we do? Do we do that? And then get into a capture race? Have to extend anyway? Because we don't do this. Weren't beasts three stones in Atari? They were, but... Or white three stones. Wait, what? Yeah, black three stones are in Atari. And you can take them, but then you're cut. And now these stones on the outside are in trouble. So white extends. Black goes back to Ko. Black says, all I want is influence. Just let me have the influence. White says I want to extend. They go back to Ko. White says, I'm going to reduce you. Adds a Ko threat. Black says, prove it. 
Going back to Co. All Black wants is just to cut off and take his profit. So we have lots of threats locally here. Black gives up. Or white gives up, rather. Oh god, I messed up. How'd I mess up? How'd I mess this up? This is the easiest thing in the world. Right? Oh, because I didn't play white's move. That makes sense. And then we add this, and then we add this, and then we have this. Alright, that makes more sense. Loud snapping sound. Yeah, 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 yeah. Alright, so at this point, we have a very odd result. Black's live in the corner. He has some influence, but it's faced completely in the middle, right? I mean, there's no bottom side anchoring, you know, territory here. It's, it's all pretty much in that center. But there are things to keep in mind when using something like this, and that is one, we can still cut this off, or cap it, or do whatever we want to it. So we have Aji there. The only question is, how is White going to use his Aji from our corner? He decides that he's going to Hane, and live in the corner. That suits black just fine. He wanted to keep the outside anyway. So here he is developing the outside, as we see here. Again, very something that we don't usually see very often. We're, we don't want to do that normally. I know a lot of cube players that would rather poke here and then jump out. Um, not... Not a fair result. I mean, the corner is gone in exchange for a couple of points. On the bright side, white does maintain a uh, connection to the outside, and there are cut points. So I think this position is hard to use for white, but I think it's playable. We'll have to see. Oh, and yeah, 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 and as uh, Yakami pointed out. Black's in the corner because of this. So it's really hard to judge this because there's too many there's too many variables. There's the corner, uh, both upper right and lower left. There's the influence that white that black is getting and the amount of cut points that it still has. The fact that we're completely fine on the bottom for white stones, that's a good thing too. <laughs> if white wins, it's Trasaki. If he loses, it sucks. Exactly. So yeah, we wouldn't play this because there's just way too much here. I mean, being able to come out is very easy. Living in the corner is very easy. So all this really does is point out that there are two things that you're trying to not let get killed. This is much more calm. Like, all right, I'm trying to build up. White's trying to get some territory. And now this next move is both interesting and extremely greedy. Black decides to attach. Why does he attach? Because rumor has it that attaching to your opponent's stones is really bad to do. So, why is black being bad? Is he so far ahead that he's just going easy on his opponent? Uh, attaching will make your opponent stronger, but it will make black stronger as well. Uh, influence, yeah, 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 yeah. If you know how to use attachments, they can be good. Exactly, exactly. Here we have a couple of things that we want to try to accomplish. If this stone gets stronger, then this stone might come back to life, which is good. If white wants to be uh, really, really greedy, then we might get something like this, which might give us more influence for the middle, which is also very good. So there's two possible outcomes that we're happy with. 
Outcome one, this gets stronger, and this comes back to life. Outcome two, this gets stronger, and we get more influence. White Hane, Black says, if you want to go to your uh, to your right hand stones, go right ahead. I will be following you every step of the way. Black White says, good point. Forget that. I'm not going to do it. I'm coming out. That influence is scary. It means Black gets to bend. And now we have potential revival of the uh, 017 stone. Unless White wants to be nice, give us Sente, and play N17 to kill it off. Which is probably not going to happen right now. Because this is, this is got to be careful. Got to be careful in this board right now. Black is very, very close to taking an enormous amount of area for himself. Killing off one stone right now, not justified in light of all of that. So White says, okay, I know what I got to do. I have to reduce you. That is my plan. So I'm going to turn and begin reduction. White says, okay, you do that. I'm going to save my stone and point out that you're not living in the corner yet. White says, okay, fine. I'll go back and live. All right, we're living. Good, 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 good. We're alive. But now what do we do now that we have Sente? How would white counter if B played S8 or what? P18 immediately. What's P18? P18 is that, okay. Um, oh, I see. Instead of this, we're going to play that. Aha, okay. Well, a couple of things here to note. Uh, one, can you kill this? What do you think? Is this dying? PRM says yes, that is dying. PRM says wait. R19 first, you'd have to throw in. Yep, otherwise it would look hopeless. True, true, true. If we tried anything else first, then uh, we can't actually do this because S18, or S19, sorry, becomes an I. But the problem we have here, uh, quite a few problems actually. Uh, problem number one, is it number one? Are we at number one? I think we're at number one. We have to do that, and then what? We have, to, we have to play here, I think, right? Otherwise, there's no hope, I think. And then we have to do this, 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 and that. After which, we have to find out if we can live or kill. Oh, let's see. I had a variation here, actually. Not the throw in, because that extends. So we just do that now, right? Because if we go there and there, that's completely fine. And if we go... Yeah, I'm thinking 018. If we go anywhere else, I think we're just dead. Right? So that opens up the 018 variation, and it also opens up the S16 for possible life. So we can't kill. So, all right, gets to live. But Black has decided what to do now. What do you think is important for Black? Because a lot of people can make influence, but not everyone can keep them. The center is important for Black, very, very true. And Kirk says that M6 
is now important. What? M6? Hmm. Okay, the bottom, I see. Ah, uh, but Bill, no, not Bilbo, sorry. Uh, Babibo? Yeah. Babibo says continue to expand. I have been listening to Lord of the Rings soundtrack all day. So yeah, first thought in my head upon reading that name was Bilbo. Anyway. Indeed, we can expand here because what's the most that white can actually do? White can do a one space jump, which we can deal with. Maybe we can attack J15 somehow. J15, let's look at that. Well, we have to cut it off. And already that's difficult to envision. Like, no matter where we pincer from, right? Um, so we have to go like fourth line, but fourth line's not really cut off. And for a little while, it could even be counterattack potentially. Threaten to, we could threaten to with a maybe something like this. Doesn't really help the left hand side too much though. And playing it just to play it might not be a good idea. Here, this has an immediate uh, effect. We're trying to expand, and it forces white to come on up. Now we can force white to defend because we capped him. Now it makes sense. We can keep white out of the center. That makes sense too. And white says, I'm going to reduce you. Now that was a pretty aggressive reduction. We can see that white has the connection up at C10. And we can see that white's got a connection potentially at d14. So it's a bit aggressive, but we can see where the safe points are. We've got two nice safe ways to connect. So black shouldn't be able to destroy us here. So black says, if I can't kill you, and you can connect up, then I guess I'm the one in trouble here. So I'm just going to go ahead and defend myself. White says, okay, I'm going to push. And then see how much Aji is here. Because those cutting points, we've been, we mentioned them earlier. They're existing. If we're going to reduce uh, black in any way, shape, or form in the middle, it's going to be utilizing these uh, last cut points. So how are we going to do this? Well, we have to first identify what our opponent is trying to do. Our opponent wants to connect here and connect here. That seems like a problem. We also identify that we've got stones nearby ready to help us out. So if we Atari here, for example, we've pretty much connected up to M8. Uh, And we've got nice fine shape to connect us to F13. The other way is a bit trickier. If we Atari the other way, then we leave the Atari behind. And now we're not in as good a shape, right? Our cutting stone's there at uh, E9, probably not going to survive. So this cut was successful. Push, 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 block, 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 cut, cut, cut. Black has to defend. And now we have a question, can this actually survive? Because white just gave up a lot if he can't. White plays the Atari. Black says that stone does not matter. I'm going to disconnect you. You must live in the center 
or die trying. All right, need forcing moves. We're gonna try to live in the middle. This is the shape game. We need two eyes. So we're gonna attach for there for an eye. Maybe. Can potentially make one at, uh, at K10 somehow. Black defends himself. Cutting, trying all the things. And this was actually an interesting one. This this is actually a very interesting play. Atari, 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 again. Because at first glance, we want to not kill the tree. Okay, we don't want to kill the tree. Not anymore. At first glance, we want to play here. Right? But the question then becomes... What happens, for example, when uh, we do get Atari? I guess we're gonna connect, right? And then we're Atari again. And then I guess we're just gonna resign because that didn't go well at all. So we can't do that variation. That variation sucks. So if we connect, and that's forced, that means we can't connect. Which is why black has to poke in here. White gets to kill. Congratulations! Invasion succeeded! Go figure! We probably would have died trying to do this, but there was just enough Aji with that crosscut. Without that move, this would not have worked. And if you'd played the Hane originally, thinking that you're going to get two eyes here, you'd probably be dead now. So that right there is an interesting bit of life and death that probably escapes most people who watch this game. So all right, what do you think? We're reduced, right? Game over, time to resign. White wins, GG. Good idea? Is black lost now? What do you think? Is this still even? Is black lost? What's going on here? Beast still has points. Greed wins. Okay. I'm a fan of greed. Black tried to take a lot of the board for himself. That is pretty greedy. But unfortunately, trying to get influence when you're against a pro whose only goal in life is to live in the area you're building, then we have a problem. Easy to live there. Really easy to live there. That's why, contrary to all the lectures that I give, I really do prefer territorial games. But alright. Black files up with an attack. Maybe we can get something done up top. Pretty basic uh, variation, and seems it okay. We we killed. That was easy. Is that the only variation there? Couldn't uh, we have done this? No, no. Doesn't quite look like it. That looks like it's gonna get killed. Yep, 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 yep. That doesn't work at all. And now even the upper right hand corner is in trouble. Okay, couldn't do that. So have to get rid of it. Doesn't take that much to read that out either, does it? Because we can all read it to the cut point. And if we can envision that cut point, then we know, ah, that's not going to live. Because white is going to connect, or black is going to connect. And then bad things everywhere. So, all right. Hane, get rid of. Extends. Black. White says, I'm going to continue reducing you. Black says, yeah, yeah, rub it in. I'm going to kill off your stones. White says, haha, I've reduced you some more. 
And we gotta make sure that we're not dying. So we gotta connect up. Otherwise, if we do anything else, then that's an Atari, and that's a Kinect, and that's an issue. So, okay, we can't let that happen. Uh, do there we go. So we're connected up. And white goes for even more. He's gonna keep trying to reduce everything that he wants to reduce. And now here is a move that would hurt my that would hurt me a lot. Throughout the entire game, I played for influence. We built up a large area. We got invaded. He lived. And now I gotta connect on the second line. Oh, that sucks. But on the bright side, J17's dead. So, that's a good thing. Let's see. White says, hey, while you're responding to me, go ahead and make that shape. Play C11, I dare you. Black says, no, I'm going to kill your corner. Which can't be done, it's just, you know, end game. White says, I'm going to fight you. And at this point, you might be asking yourself, who wins this game? Because this is looking pretty rough for Black. However, I have to point out, if you think this looks rough for black, let's take a minute to look at white's territory. White has almost no points in the upper right, almost no points on the left, because that's second line and that's, you know, three stones captured and that's second line as well, not much there. We've got uh, lovely first line territory, some, some second, little, a hint, there's the tiniest indication of third on the lower right, and another corner. That's not that much territory. That's really not that much territory. Black, on the other hand, has killed a few things. Black is technically going to connect and get some territory there as well. And he's killed a couple of stones. So he's not doing that badly. And he got the corner, I should point out. That's last large. So this is kind of a game where no one has a lot. So these little moves aren't the end of the world. Which is a good thing, because we have to connect the second line again. Now this confused me. I thought that he'd connect or something. But he didn't. He plays the Atari. I now have no idea what these white stones are doing. Cause that that Atari is Sente. We have to go back and live in the corner. So I'm not entirely certain if these white stones are gonna live. But I do know Black defended his other investment immediately. You've done this countless times. Overstand an endgame. Yeah, that's really painful. But alright, all we gotta do is connect and we're fine. So white says we're gonna start off here. Because black's gonna defend. We can kind of walk into a co, getting closer to the stones. Go fight a co. Black says no. All right, now we're getting somewhere. Now we're getting somewhere. It looks like our stones might be OK after all. Wait, what? Did I miss something? No, I didn't. OK. White takes, black takes, forces black to live.
threatens to connect on up. And again, <laughs> looks like single digit queues, huh? Well, it is not. Playing in game. Tries to come through. Cannot. Definitely has to go back and play R2 now, or not R2, J2. Otherwise, Atari and go forth and problems there. Now, the good part about all this is the white stones are not going to die, in case anyone's still curious about that. Because we can see that uh, if black gets sente, um, I don't know, how's black getting sente? To try to cut this off, can't do it, we're going to connect, right? There's no disconnect, there's no uh, way to block that. So these are connected up. But even despite that being all connected up, we can go here and we can see all of the territory that black has. And we can see all the territory that white has, which white doesn't have very much. A lot of second line. I mean, an enormous, enormous amount of second line territory. Way more than you want in a game. I mean, that's second, that's second, that's second. This is second. So we know that white doesn't have very many points. As a result, white resigns. Hooray, black wins, despite being completely invaded and reduced. And this is the kind of game that I wanted to see this week. I wanted to see a game where black played for something, well, anyone played for something, and they still won. Doesn't matter if they were built up, doesn't matter if they were reduced, nothing their opponent mattered or did matter. Just was not enough and still won the game. But all right, I will see you guys next time. Hopefully, website will be up and operational next time. Otherwise, next lecture might have a few, few interesting expressions littering throughout the lecture. Some fascinating phrases, you might say, that might get me banned on KGS. But all right, take care, everyone.